Undertale is one of the prime examples of why you don't need great art and programming. They literally have a ginormous if-else case statement. The point that people bring up about the programming of Undertale is that if we take a look at their dialogue options, you could see that they have a ginormous switch case statement where each of the different case statements will result in a different answer. And so most people or most programmers would frown upon this. And it is considered not one of the best practices let's say that and i agree to an extent because i myself have giant switch case statements in my engine too and sometimes there's a better way to do this but you don't have to and so undertale usually is regarded in not the best of lights when it comes to this but it still doesn't matter because it's a huge game it's massively successful if we take a look at undertale on steam 208,000 overwhelmingly positive reviews that's insane and most recently they got 4,000 overwhelmingly positive reviews yeah and i mean you could make the argument that this is not very readable if you take a look at this however it doesn't really matter because the end result is what the players will see and the players have voted that this is a good game and so i wonder what this being a bad developer is meant to be so let's see take a look here okay you saw the title but i'm not yeah. talking about the gameplay i'm not talking about the dialogue i'm not mm -hmm. talking about the story i'm talking about the way that the game was made see toby fox was not an incredible developer he never claimed to be he never wanted to be but he still made that's me that's me one of the best-selling games of all time. Because the code of Undertale is filled with a bunch of interesting workarounds to problems and many <laughs> failed attempts. You know how you have the option to either kill enemies or spare them? Well, if you decide to butcher them all, like a psychopath, which I'm sure you know is called the genocide route, you're eventually given the choice to erase the world. And when you do that, the game comes to an end by crashing itself and exiting. Well, what was originally meant to happen in this okay. ending was a little more intense. The initial idea was to actually delete the game itself off of your system. Gone no. as if you had just uninstalled it. But the thing is... It doesn't Toby work. Toby didn't know how to do that. He tried. Bless his heart, he tried. And you know what? It would probably take me a hot minute to figure out how to do that too. But it's really funny to see his attempts at doing so in the code. You can see... <laughs> Oh, this is so great, man. This looks like my code when I try something new. I love this, man. See, guys, I told you, it doesn't fucking matter, you know? The game's gonna be good regardless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look at that, guys. He tried to do Undertale executable, but then he realized, okay, maybe I have to spell it Under Undertale executable. And then he's like, okay, maybe that's not correct. Maybe I have to do Undertale executable or in all capital letters, Undertale executable. <laughs> oh, I love that. And you know what's funny? None of these things matter because uh, as far as I can tell, uh, it doesn't matter whether it is a capital letter or not a capital letter. See here that he tries every case sensitive version of deleting the file name Undertale, but no luck. There are other games that manage to do that and the effect is very unsettling. You feel completely powerless. Doki Doki Literature Unix. Club kind of does something like that. And so does a game called One Shot. The idea is that you only have one chance to beat the game, and if you close the game or leave, well, the main character who you're controlling and needs you, um, dies of neglect. And then you don't have a character to play the game with, so you're done oh. playing the game. It's pretty intense so you can understand why toby wanted to do something like that and it would have resonated heavily to feel completely responsible for not only killing off every character but also destroying their world in an alternate timeline that is the genocide route ending the many endings of undertale are part of what defines the game but another part of that is the art style it's quirky it's colorful yeah. and as you probably noticed so like i said once before that the art style of undertale while it looks cheap, it's still very poppy and there's a bunch of contrast happening from the world to the character and in the world itself that it actually looks really good. It's not the case that the game looks cheap or bad. It's on purpose. Not perfect. It's not beautifully shaded. The line work can be a little funky and it's kind of inconsistent. I was trying to find the general consensus on whether people liked the art in Undertale or not. I like and it. And I made the mistake of opening a Steam thread 
which is the one place I found that's worse than a Reddit thread. But I did get the information that a lot of people passed on Undertale solely because of the art. And what's funny with that is that a lot of Undertale's art was actually removed or changed because it looked too good. Yeah, there's this art of Papyrus <laughs> where the animation was too good so they had to simplify Damn. it. And this art of Doge had to be redone because it, and I quote, didn't look crappy enough. The bad <laughs> art, and I say that very lovingly, definitely has a charm to it though, and even the completely unused- You can't tell me that this doesn't look beautiful, man. Take a look at this. This is insane. You know what this is? Anna Londo. When you first see the city, but in pixel art. It's insanely beautiful. It's not crappy at all. It's crazy. You know how they work with the shading? Oh, this is completely shaded and then there's some bright pixels here on the side and this is like properly shaded. Does too. This was an early test sprite called Lava Creature, which is later renamed to Pole and used as an object without the face. Big Bob has no known purpose, but just kind of exists unused in the game. And here's this sprite of Flowey, which I think is meant to be funny, but it's honestly the most unsettling expression that I've seen this character have. I can imagine Flowey saying some pretty terrifying things with this face. Or this one. Wow. And speaking of, another interesting thing about the Code of Undertale is actually the way that the dialogue is handled. Usually, when you make dialogue in a video game, you have a distinct file that has all the possible text that can pop up in- See, you know, this is what noobs do. This is what noobs do, okay? They see how it's done somewhere else, and they just blatantly copy that, you know? A real GigaChat uses their brain to figure out their own solution. And he figured out his own solution, and it worked. In your game. This is usually a CSV file yep. or a JSON. And you can mm -hmm. think of it as basically a database for text. So yeah. then, at different parts in your code, you extract specific parts of this file. And that'll depend on what character you're talking to, if you have a certain item, yeah, whatever. Yeah, but then you have to load the, the file, find the correct spot in the file, and then extract only that part of the file, read only this part until this, you know, offset in the file. Why don't you just make a switch Most case efficient statement? efficient and common ways to do it. But the mm. way that Undertale handles dialogue is much worse. All of much the dialogue better. in the entire game, the every game. text box that pops up is handled in one massive if statement. This is what it looks like. It's called a switch statement and it works mm -hmm. like this. A condition goes here. Let's say we're looking at a number. Now, if that number is one, do this. If it's two, do this, etc. So for Undertale, this was a huge statement. Smart, smart. Subscribe, like, and give me your first bond. True, true. Containing all mm. of the dialogue. And every time dialogue was run, it would run. Case 737 out of what must have been at least a thousand lines. Now, this is technically decom... At least a thousand lines? These are amateur numbers. This guy can go to 5,000 lines. Oh, this is a Vulcan renderer, by the way. You could either write the entire switch case statement, if you wanted to, for Undertale, or you could write a Vulcan renderer. The decision is up to you. Piled code, so it looks slightly different, but I imagine that it's like, oh, if you're in this part of the game talking to Papyrus, make it say this. If you're in this specific place talking to this specific character with this specific item, do this. Undertale is already a highly custom experience where the dialogue varies greatly depending on what choices you make, so you can imagine the sheer size of this switch statement. And usually, 5,000 lines of code, yeah, we just checked it. 5,000. Something like this would be very bad because it would slow things down and just very inefficient but undertale itself requires it's actually not that inefficient if you think so it's maybe inefficient when compiling we figured that out the other day when i recompiled like a switch case statement into like an array index but other than that it's it's not actually inefficient at all it's actually more efficient than loading a file from disk maybe he even auto generated it i don't know if he did Maybe he did, but uh, judging by his other programming endeavors, trying to lead it, delete an executable, I think he just hand wrote this and that's fine. He found a way to do things. He never let himself or chat or someone else deter him and he just kept going. Perfect. Such little space and memory that I, I guess it's fine. It doesn't it's cause substantial lag anywhere and I guess Toby was fine doing it this way. So, hey, all the power to him. He can make the code as unoptimal as he wants and it doesn't matter. And he can write it however he wants to. 
There are rooms with literally hundreds of if statements. There's like 10 cutscenes controlled by one object nestled in an increasingly verbose series of if statements to determine where it goes. The snowballs in that one room have like a bajillion vertices. And then the best part, <laughs> doesn't matter. Kudos to Shay yeah, on Twitter for that matter, one. They also because the players don't see that. That's the that. thing. The moving text box gag in the conveyor belt room creates and destroys and recreates the text every single frame in order to give the illusion of a moving box. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Instead of just moving a box, we're going to make it a stop motion animation. <laughs> Toby clearly writes whatever he wants to, which is why when you inspect the Undertale website, you're actually given a fun little message at the very bottom that reads, what are you doing? Looking for secrets? Don't put your nose where it doesn't belong, or you might learn something you don't like. Hee hee hee. Toby actually once talked about how he's sad that games in this era don't have any secrets hardly, which I agree and disagree with, but Undertale is definitely one of the games out there with a lot of secrets. Damn. Secrets throughout the game cool. that you might actually never find, and they're designed to be that way. And not because you aren't digging hard enough for them, but because at the start of- Yeah, this is what indie games have come to now. Most indie games, they do have secrets while- uh, I mean, there's some, some, some AAA games that have that too. But for the most part, you find this stuff in indie games. Of each new playthrough in Undertale, you're actually- I.O. is more optimal than branching. No, you have to allocate memory in some cases. Not in all cases. It depends on your allocator, but you have to allocate the memory as well assigned a random number from 1 to 100 called a fun value, and then different rare occurrences happen depending on what value you got. If your number is in the range of, say, 2 to 39, you'll get a call from a random number as you're walking through Snowden. Other events will only happen if your number is one specific value or in a very small range. The occurrences that do happen are kind of just fun little eggs or short dialogue or small changes that don't affect the gameplay a whole lot. But it is cool. And not a lot of games will predetermine a value at the very start of your game that affects encounters, because that means you're sacrificing a lot of content that the player would just never run and into. And he just does it's that? That's insane. It's a classic insane. game developer's dilemma. <clears throat> you want your players to have a custom, personal experience, but the more customization or choices you give them, the less gameplay will be visible across the board. You never really have choice in these games. That's true. But under he, he dies anyways. No matter what you do, he dies. He's scripted to die. He can't live. Sucks. Customization. In my opinion, it sucks. Choices you give them, the less gameplay will be There's visible no across the board. But Undertale is built differently, because it said, you know what? I don't care. You'd have to reap. That could be a big reason why it's so successful, by the way. Because he the didn't, entire game. He didn't go that route, the illusion of choice. He actually gave you choice. In order to get some endings. And there are so many conditionals that go into every dialogue statement. Heck, you skip nearly all the puzzles in the game if you choose to kill every enemy. Undertale is clearly a game made out of passion, wanting to tell a story, give you things to think about, and put you into a video game where your choices actually matter. Not the illusion of your choices mattering, where encounters are the same no matter what dialogue option yep. you choose. Yep. Which, by the way, is the stupidest thing in game design, but whatever. Undertale don't do that. And the best part is that to make an experience like that, you don't have to be an expert programmer. If anything is the takeaway from this video, it's that. Games aren't a science. You don't have to be perfectly optimal. Of course, some things should be, or else we get this fun thing that we call lag. But they don't have to be flawless yeah, in how they should, work. Your game shouldn't they like, just it, have to work. She, she's right here. Like, you don't need to be the best programmer of all times. Absolutely not. You can do whatever you want when programming. Just don't make your game lag. Make it play smoothly and you're good. If you manage to get a stable frame rate, that's like already half half away there. They have to do what you want them to That's actually the one thing why I started out with Vulkan instead of OpenGL, because I thought I could get a more stable frame rate with that instead of OpenGL. To do and tell the story that you want them to tell. Remember, Undertale was made by one person with the help of an artist in a free software. That software is Game Maker, who I thank for partnering with me on today's video. I've used Game Maker for a lot of my own projects, game and it was Maker. actually the first game engine that I started making games Never with. Use game I found Maker. that it's very intuitive. Everything is laid out on this nice big dashboard where you can move everything software around. Program, Folders right? are pre-made for you. It's very easy to see everything you're working on at once visually, which my little organization brain loves and needs. Tile sets, animations, intuitive. level editing, movement. 
All these scary things in game development are wildly uncomplicated compared to other engines. I could explain all those things to you in like 60 seconds, but I don't have to because there are so many tutorials online that can teach you how to do it because the community is massive. There's a reason why Undertale Good. used it. Remember, Toby Fox was not a professional developer, but he still made Undertale because Game Maker is extremely beginner friendly. There's a code option where you can obviously write code for your game or a visual drag and drop option. Which I wonder if he had if he did the visual drag and drop option for the Switch case statement can be a really nice introduction to just learning how to think like a programmer and make your very first game. We're talking Hotline Miami, Hyper Light Drifter, Katana Zero, Deltarune also of course. Those iconic indie titles have all been made in Game Maker. It's completely free to use for any non-commercial games you make, and if you do decide to sell your games, Costs it's a one-time fee for any PC, bucks. web, or mobile exports you might make. And of course, they also offer console You don't exports. like Game Maker Download cakes? Game Maker for oh, I have never tried it. I don't know. I have, don't have an opinion. For free, using the link in the description, I am so excited to see all the indie games you guys are going to bring <laughs> into the world with Game Maker. Now that, my friends, is why Undertale is the most horrible game ever written. And I hope it's clear by now we know I was not mm. talking about the gameplay, the dialogue, or the story, because that is incredible. The game is imperfect, it's quirky, a little weird, a little funky, but it's a lovable story and it's really cool to see how many other games it's gone on to inspire. I'd be willing to bet that- You know, I bet the game has good sound effects. That at least 50% of solo game developers could tell you that they were inspired by Undertale. That's all I got though. I'm losing my voice. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. A wonderful rest of your day. If you're interested in joining a community of game developers, check out the Discord server linked in the description. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! Okay. There are dogs in the game, and you can pet the dogs. And this might not be the first game to have so many dogs you can pet, many dogs you can pet. What people have been wanting their whole life is a game where you can pet a lot of dogs. I have to say, like, you know, while oftentimes the game does look kind of bad, if you take a look at, like, for example, this shot right here, a lot of stuff looks really good. Ultimately, I think this is one of the best examples. I'm pretty sure many of you have heard this already. Terrible coding, yet still great game. And this is ultimately what customers want to know. Is the game good or is it not?